Okay, hi everyone, uh, it's Gerald here, the Grand Seiko Guy, and uh, we got a watch to show you that's going to be going on the site today, um, available for purchase, um, and it's a special, um, it's a 6156-8010. Um, I'm actually showing you two of these, the one that's going to go on the site today is this one that's on the left, I'm just showing you um, this comparison between the one on the right, um, the one on the right has the obviously has a has the white dial as does the one on the left but the one on the left uh the dial has done has gone this sort of glorious patina uh over the years this is the first one of these what you've seen with a, a patinated dial and it really is quite quite spectacular just that very very subtle shade uh of sort of ye yellowy orange which has come in um which just sort of really really sets it off so i wanted to start this video by showing you the two side by side so you could see see the comparison um, now we'll, we'll move this one out of the way and we'll concentrate on on the piece that's uh, for sale. So uh, the specials were introduced in the 1971 catalogue, uh, volume one of 1971. Um, so this was shortly after the introduction of the VFAs. <clears throat> Excuse me. And these are effectively sort of VFA lights, if you like. They're um, they regulate. They're regulated to plus or minus three seconds per day. Um, so only plus or minus one second out from the VFAs. So these were truly, truly top, top quality watches and introduced at a price of uh, this one of 68,000 yen. The key thing about this uh, reference um, is it's one of only two Grand Seiko references along with the 6146 8010 um, to have a sapphire crystal. And it's not just a sapphire crystal, but it's also a faceted crystal. Uh, which we can see as we as we move uh, the watch around uh, in the camera here. Uh, you can see it's got two two vertical facets, um, which really really are quite fantastic as a as a detail on the watch. You can see how thick that crystal is at the top, because obviously that part of the crystal is is uh, is thicker. Um, and then at the side, you can see it thinning off because of the of that facet. Um, the other thing which is um, very special about this watch is the case material. This is made from hardened stainless steel, not just regular stainless steel. So we do find that these watches um, age extremely well uh, and keep their original Zeratsu finishing and the very, very fine and sharp case edges um, even better than the, the, regular, the regular Grand Seiko's. I think it's probably fair to say, um, and you can judge this for yourself if you want to look at the the detail uh, look particularly around the the facets here and where though where those different surfaces actually join um, there is no hint of a, uh, a sort of a, a line between the two facets which would show that you know there's sort of a slightly curved polish to it um, do compare this with the with the modern Grand Seiko's I think these these hold up very very well and arguably um, are actually better finished than some of the modern Grand Seiko's Okay, so let's just uh, look around the watch to show you the, the quality of it. We'll come come around on this side first. Uh, there you can see see very clearly just how good the polishing is and the, the very, very sharp definition on the case lines. Uh, obviously, we have the, the GS crown and uh, a very nice uh, original gold uh, Grand Seiko medallion on the case back. Um, the... Case reference number here, 247278. The first two digits indicate the, the year and the month of manufacture. So this was manufactured in, Jul uh, in July, in April uh, 1972. And uh, in actual fact, this watch, um, as I said, it was introduced in volume one of the 1971 catalogue. Um, and its last appearance in the catalogue was in volume, uh, was, sorry, was in the 1972 catalogue, which didn't actually have two volumes. So these were only on sale for, for two years. Um, because of the the uh, specifics around the obviously the the movement and um, the with the regulation of the movement the case finishing and that fabulous faceted crystal these are very very collectible um, and I think more and more people who are getting into collecting vintage Grand Seiko um, are a lot of people are looking at one of these as as one of their you know possibly their first uh, or, or or second choice. So let's just look at the, the rest of the watch. We'll just turn it around uh, so we can see see the other side. And again, there you can really get a sense of just how good that Zeratsu polishing 
is and how fine those those case lines are. Obviously, with any watch that's going to be you know sort of pushing well 40 what, 47 years old, there's going to be some hairline scratches. You know, we're not saying this is in absolutely mint new or stock condition, um, but it is it is uh, absolutely superb. We'll just see if we can look at it end on um, and look at the look at those lugs and the finishing there. You can see absolutely spectacular. I very much doubt this has ever been polished, uh, it's on machine polished since it was made. Uh, we'll just turn it around here and look at that end as well. So all in all, uh, a spectacular example uh, of a very highly desirable and collectible watch. Um, one thing to mention about the 6156 specials is where they, uh, another benefit they have over the, six, the standard 6146 references is you'll note that uh, here we're seeing a Kanji uh, day wheel. Um, and it's actually dual language, so you can you can set the day wheel to be either uh, English or kanji, and even better than that, it's also quick set. Um, the six one four six, you can't quick set the uh, the day. You can quick set the date. So we'll just have a quick look at, at that. I'm going to pull the crown out to the first stop, and if I turn it clockwise, you can see that we're setting the date. And if I turn it anti-clockwise, you'll see it moves on to the English day and then the kanji day. So how that actually works, let's just set it to Friday and I'll pull it out one more stop and we'll just turn the hands so you can see what happens in terms of the, the time. So we're at midday, we'll come around three o'clock. Nine, okay. So what happens is as we approach 12 o'clock, first of all, the date changes. So you can see it starts to change, then it will snap in at 12. And then the day starts to change. And between 12 and 1, it changes to the kanji date. And then between 1 and 2, it changes to the English date. You can see there it has the code EJ to say it's English and Japanese. And then it change, at 2 o'clock, it changes to the English day. If you wanted it to stay on the kanji, then all you have to do is um, at some point during the day, obviously don't do this during the, the automatic changeover period, um, change the day to kanji, and then the reverse happens. We'll see as we go around to 12 o'clock, and coming up the evening. Okay, so now we'll see that, um, as before, the day, the date starts to change and then flips over at 12, and then we see the kanji day between 12 and 1 will change to the English day, and then between 1 and 2, it'll go to the kanji day. So it's just for one hour of the, of the day, probably when you're asleep, it'll be showing the uh, English day, and then apart from that, it shows the kanji day. So a lot of people like to uh, leave these on the kanji days. Uh, let's just get the second hand out of the way of there. Um, it's quite, quite, quite nice because they have, um, oops, one stop, they have, uh, the, the weekdays in black, and then we get to to Saturday, which is in blue, and then Sunday, which is in red. So there's just a nice a nice little detail there. Uh, okay, so there's really uh, there's one tiny spot just to highlight on the dial, um, just there near near the centre. But apart from that, a very very nice even pattern to this one. Um, so this will be um, listed on the website. If you're looking at this on YouTube, click the link below. Uh, to go and have a look at it on the website um, where we detail the price and we'll also put in a, uh, the beauty shot. Um, so thank you very much for watching and uh, if you're interested in this watch uh, go to the website and drop us a line by filling in the inquiry form uh, which you'll find below the video. Okay thank you very much and we'll be back soon uh, with another watch for sale.